heard we had a question. Can you grapple teammates? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was showing that earlier. You, If you do it, it's actually kind of great because uh, you get extra momentum. It just launches you, right? And it really launches you. So right. you can you can uh, kind of leapfrog through the world uh, pretty quickly. Oh, it's yeah. Kinda... I'm like it's a regular cool. mint blitz launching myself through the air here. Hello, everybody. So 303 actually mentioned me in the co-op campaign live stream that they did. 303 also spoke a lot about the cooperative campaign flight test that is coming out maybe today, this weekend at the latest, and we have a lot to talk about. I went through the entire live stream and took notes from the entire video. I'm gonna go through everything that I wrote down and then my personal thoughts at the end. So first and foremost, the Halo Infinite Steam flight is too late to sign up for. However, Xbox, you can actually download the Insider app and get access all throughout the flight. So if you haven't signed up already and you want to play Halo Infinite Co-op, get the Insider Xbox app, follow the prompts, and you can play it too. I have an Xbox and a PC set up, so I might set it up on two devices and then do some really cool campaign stuff. If you guys would like to see me do that, let me know in the comments. But it was just an idea I had. Moving on from that, if one player is halfway through the game and the other player has only just started, you have to start from the start of the game again. You can only play up to the mission that everybody has currently completed. Something really cool that I didn't know is skulls are actually combined. So if one player brings in cowbell, the other person brings in bandana, it'll combine both skulls available. So if you have your friends go off and get different skulls and all come back and play together, you don't actually have to get them all. Of course, a lot of you guys are going to have all the skulls already. I thought it was something cool they added in. I had a lot of questions of you guys asking, does the game get harder the more you add players? And 303 also answered that and said yes. The co-op AI behaviors are changed, so they're more aggressive, more defensive, and it scales based on how many people you add to the game. Speaking of anyone adding to the game, anyone can skip cutscenes, and when you actually activate a cutscene, it will teleport all players to wherever the host is. The biggest change with Halo Infinite co-op campaign from past titles, in other games, there's a set loadout for the weapons you get when you respawn. With Halo Infinite, whatever weapon you have in your solo game, you will bring into the co-op campaign game. So if you have the tank gun, a rocket launcher, you'll spawn into the co-op session with whatever weapon you have. The only downside is that if you don't have any ammo, even when you die, you will not respawn with ammo. I would expect the tank gun to get a lot of use because it has unlimited ammo, but I was really hoping you would at least spawn in with ammo if you die with absolutely nothing. There's also going to be new achievements. I hope there's some really fun achievements. If there's any really cool ones, I'm going to try to do them in a fancy way, make some content out of it, just have fun with it. So we'll see when it fully releases what that is. A really big thing is the ping is similar to the matchmaking. So unlike the Master Chief Collection, where if you play with someone in cooperative campaign on the other side of the world and it's borderline unplayable, Halo Infinite will actually allow you to play co-op campaign with people from different regions. I'm not sure if they've improved the netcode or whatever they've done, but it's a really big step in the right direction. 303 also covered the four chiefs versus your own Spartan question and said because it's Master Chief's story and we want it to be a solo campaign, we went with four chiefs. Finally, we have replay mission. It's through the TAC map not actually from the menus. It actually saves your progress on your active mission if you decide to go and replay something mid-mission, which is great. Defeating a high-value target will give you the weapon, the special weapon, in your own world too, which is good. You can even replay the bases, like the Forge of Tish and other banished bases. The only two things I didn't like was the 300 meter tether, obviously because I want to fly around the map, that's going to limit me in that regard. But if you're just playing normally, it shouldn't be an issue. And the fact that you can spawn in during a boss fight. I feel like a boss fight should have one life, and if you die, you have to restart and do it again. The bosses aren't that difficult, so I hope that's something 343 looks into. With all of that said, I'm very excited for co-op campaign. It definitely should have been there on launch, but I also understand the difficulties 343 faces of transitioning to an open world campaign that plays like past Halo titles. I'm just happy that it's coming out. So guys, let me know what you think of co-op campaign in the comments below. Are you excited for it? Are you going to play it? I'm really happy that I can create content for you guys that's unique and that you're gonna love. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you'll enjoy today's video and I'll see you guys later.